right, y'all, it is Saturday, the 8th of September, and I worked out here yesterday, but I did not film anything. Got a lot of things going through my head as far as the fuel system and all that. I talked to the tuner and kind of belittled me a little bit because I didn't want to do E85, so I'm trying to figure out a way to do E85 and not spend $3,000 on a gas tank. for the uh, waste gates. Um, I got those pieces all cut up and grinded. So, got that one there, it's coming off the passenger pipe and then this one off of the driver pipe. And so right now I guess I'm gonna just cut a hole in these pipes, get them close, get these tacked on or whatever I'm gonna do so um, I will put a put you on a time lapse for that. There's no sense in sitting here grinding away. That could get boring. So uh, time lapse it is. I'm gonna get these things tacked on and then try and get as much stuff welded up at today as I can. I still have the uh, V bands on the headers that need to be um, welded, and so I kind of just want to get this done. I got some other parts from Summit yesterday, so. Obviously, uh, with the hot side coming down, I can't have the filter here, but I am gonna, I think, take that stuff that way. Uh, I think, I'm not sure yet. I, I guess I could go that way, I'm not sure. But at any rate, I'm gonna move where the oil filter goes and maybe add an oil cooler. Uh, I got the exhaust off of it. Uh, Kelly and I had talked about maybe trying to come back here into this stock exhaust, but I'm not, gonna spend all that money right now trying to do that I can do that later um, so we got the I got the rest of the exhaust out of here I got the tank out of here and the tank is it's pretty bad the original tank uh, looks like the lockering and all that's pretty eaten up and then you're not gonna be able to see in there, but well, maybe you can. Uh, you can see how kind of rusty it is in there. See all that? So a long time ago, I had Kelly weld the fitting in there and had a kind of had trouble getting it to seal, I think, because the tank's two pieces of metal. And so it was tough to get it to seal up. And so I took it to the radiator shop and they put some silver solder on there, blah, blah, blah. So um, a fuel tank from Summit was a hundred bucks. And so I ordered, I sent back the Holly 525 pump that, I, that would go in a stock tank and I ordered a dual 450. I'll drop a link below. And I'm gonna try and take this brand new tank that I'll be able to weld on. That thing's old and got fumes in it. And uh, I may have to cut the top of that thing off and pull the baffle out. But uh, this dual 450 pump deal will allow me to run the E85 and um, the dual pumps will you know, be able to supply enough fuel for, for me to break this block straight in half. So I'm waiting on Summit to get that stuff here to look at that, but the goal today is to just weld up as much stuff as I can. Um, really need to get cranking. I need to get um, an intercooler shoved up in this front bumper and order, I would, like I said before, I'm just gonna order a freaking three inch um, cheap kit from I got a couple of vibrant pieces already, but a three inch aluminum thing from uh, Probably Amazon and uh, Kelly said he's got like a bead roller for the end of the pipes That I can and that's all I'm gonna do nothing crazy on the cold side uh, Kelly told me he made 40 pounds of boost with those um, silicone couplers and clamps. So we're not gonna do anything near that um, But I need to get this thing cranking like these next two days uh, I'm still waiting on stuff from Motion Raceworks to come, which, for whatever reason, uh, last time I ordered from them, that stuff came really quick. Give me that. Uh, this time I ordered, and my stuff sat there for like two days, so I had to email them and say, what's up? So, kind of was hoping to have that stuff by the weekend here so that I could get the Mac valves. Kind of trying to get everything figured out where I'm going to put them, and I need to get some fuel lines ordered as well. 
because of the E85, I wanna make sure I got the right fuel lines that'll uh, not corrode with that stuff. At any rate, time lapse, let's get to welding. Got everything fitted up. The freaking driver pipe, I cut a little bit too much. So when I get to, I'll show you, when I get to filling in this one side, it's gonna be tricky. So I made, <laughs> made the whole, it's almost perfect everywhere, but up here, it's gonna have a little gappy that I'm gonna have trouble trying to fill in. But I got him. I left this one a little bit smaller, and that is because when this goes on, it's gonna be really tough to get down in there. So I'm gonna hit it on the inside in there. But I think first, before I do anything, I'm gonna tack the uh, wastegate flanges on. And then on the pipe I just showed you, I think I'm gonna just weld the flange about I don't know an inch or so that way I, I can get all the rest of stuff once it's on the uh, hot side but the part where it's real close in here I won't have to worry about it So just getting everything tacked up. And I'm gonna put some tape on this one and tack it up, but it's hot. Kind of burned through right there. And uh, I'm gonna let it cool down before I try and tape it and tack it. Monday, September 11th, 2023. Uh, today is a day, I think we're 22 years since that happened, which is crazy. Um, got a little bit of work done this weekend. I'm about to show you what we got. Running behind, y'all, running behind. Oh, let's get this bad boy lifted up so I can show you. <laughs> All right, so don't make fun of my wells. This is my first time doing stainless. I know it isn't pretty. I think it'll hold, it's all good. But I spent a fair amount of time welding this monstrosity together. I got the uh, wastegates done yesterday and gusseted. Kelly told me to gusset them so they don't crack. Hopefully they don't crack. Uh, I welded a plate up there. Uh, there's the old herb skis. So I got that done. I need to get this fuel pump out from when I was gonna do a different setup of nitrous. I need to get that out of there. Um, we need to figure out what we're gonna do with the intercooler. I'm thinking about something. I'm really thinking about something. But the next thing we need to do is modify this gas tank. I ordered a, a gas tank from Summit and we are gonna modify it to fit this Holly pump. Let me get this pump out. So, uh, Eddie had addiction. Kind of made fun of me because I'm not uh, on the E85 kick. And so that kind of, I just said to heck with it. I'll just go E85 now and uh, be done with it. Well. Uh, 
in order to do that, uh, some of these people that want $3,000, $2,000 for tanks and pumps are smoking some good dope because there ain't no way I'm paying that much money for something like that. So I ordered this deal from Holly. I'll flip the camera around and I will show you. And that is what I'm going to use. Um, so this is from Holly. It's like a universal deal. It can go in tanks that are uh, 12 inches in depth. And I'm going to try and get that where the factory piece would have been. Uh, I've got to do some modifying because this is an EFI tank. There's a baffle in there. I'm gonna try and get that baffle out of the way. When you look at Holly's website or when you look at their YouTube about that setup there, uh, specifically talks about getting it away from a baffle. So I'm gonna try and get my hole going and then hopefully I can get my hand in there without slicing it all up and I can get this baffle out. So this baffle is not as big as this one in my stock tank. Um, and I think this will pick it up in the film, but you can see where they've just tack welded. So uh, that is where my drain is gonna go. I'm gonna have to put a new drain. As you've seen in the other one, it was rusty. Let me see if I can get the light in there. So you can see the, uh, what you would call that deal. baffle or whatever it's not that big i'm gonna try and take that sucker out and before everybody starts going crazy that's what holly wants uh, it comes with this mat that attaches to the bottom of the pump that's supposed to help it uh pick up the fuel or what have you so uh that deal's calling for a four inch hole and to do is uh, just drill these out because it feels like yeah that, that comes all the way over to here so I think I'll knock these off first that way it's easier to drill a hole in and then I'll get my hole drilled in there and then I'll work on getting the baffle out. So time lapse is probably gonna be for a second and then I'll come back to you. too concerned about this I can dolly and hammer that out but the reason I'm not too concerned either is because when this hat goes in and you start to tighten these lugs pop out and suck this thing down there's a gasket that goes here so not too concerned about that Gotta figure out the routing of this deal here. Yeah, that looks good. I'll just lower the pumps down all the way to the bottom of the tank. I'll be able to uh, retain the factory tank. 
And if anybody wonders why are you doing that, because your fuel pump runs a whole lot cooler when it's inside your gas tank and not outside your gas tank. And when you're driving hundreds of miles, you don't want overheating fuel pumps. All right, so I think that'll probably do it for Monday night. I'm gonna go in and try and get a video edited. I need to clean up in here real quick. I'm a little concerned with how big these holes are. Uh, kind of big, and this is kind of a thin tank. I'm gonna have to probably set, set this deal down and set it, it's thin, but I'm gonna have to set this down and kind of push these out and then maybe put some copper on the back and try and uh, you know get them TIG welded up. I'm not worried about making these seal the radiator guy. He, I guarantee he'll be able to solder those if need be and get them to seal. Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday the, I don't know, we're 14 days away. I was out here yesterday on Saturday and I was just trying to get as much work done as I could. I didn't film anything, but I'm gonna show you where I'm at right now, what I'm doing. Yesterday I mounted the oil cooler. I mounted the remote oil filter, took all the stock fuel lines out, mounted the flex fuel sensor off of the existing, where you'd have the fuel filter. I'm gonna bring the new fuel filter down over here. I need to make a bracket for that. Uh, right now I am getting ready to drill a hole in my fender and so all I did was I took one of the three and a half inch caps I think it's three and a half inch oh, I've got it pushed in here but it's like a fits in this three and a half inch uh, tube that I used poked a hole in the center got this thing level with a piece of welding wire and now I know that's where my hole is going to be so I'm going to get that hole drilled pipe i'm gonna have to move the evap canister um but i'm just trying to motor without trying to film every last thing because it's going to just take me forever and i'm on a time crunch All right, so this is what the finished product looks like. And it's about now that I realize I'm running out of time and I pretty much stop filming and just start working. My peeps, it is uh, Tuesday, September 19th or 20th, whatever day. And it's time to get the intercooler mocked up in here. So this car still has AC. I'm gonna try and keep AC for the 
for the car. I, I don't want to get rid of it. Um, and so trying to put an air cooler in an LX car, most of the time they cut the bottom of the bumper out and I'm trying to not do that. And I think I might have a way to get away with getting my little intercooler in there and keeping the AC. Um, I'm getting ready to cut some metal and we'll see. Sorry, I haven't filmed much because I just been trying to thrash. I am uh, actually quite a ways behind. Uh, should have already been driving this car with the turbo and all that. I waited too long. And now I'm starting to panic a little bit because I'm leaving myself no room for, uh, for air. So let me flip this around and show you what I've got so far. So last night I completed the entire downpipe. Um, O2 bung is in it, down underneath the crank, bracketed it to this here uh, and exited the fender. Um, it actually sticks out a little further, but since I've got the bumper cover off, um, that dills kind of moves. So that is all done as far as the hot side in and out of the turbo is concerned. And obviously we're working on the cold side. So what I'm going to try and do is move remove or what i did do actually is remove the stock holders from ford that they use to kind of wedge the uh, ac condenser in and what i think i'm going to do is make some metal brackets and just try and move that thing in ever so slightly and then that way i can try and get the intercooler in here get the bumper on without having to cut a bunch of stuff now I fully expect that at least here is going to have to come out of this bumper. I don't know what's going to go on there because as you can see, this kind of comes in. I've come to the realization that it's okay if I lose a little bit of that stuff. And I've got a whole nother front bumper right there. So I'm just going to sit here and work and see if I can get this deal pushed in enough room for the radiator to go back in and then i'll get the intercooler mocked up uh, i've been going to bed <laughs> at like midnight and then getting up at five and i'm really really tired and so when you're really really tired you try and rush and i don't want to cut any corners i don't want to just get this deal together and then get over there and have problems i'm really trying to build this thing so that when i get over there i don't have any problems hopefully knock on wood i'm like I said, I'm just not leaving my, myself any room for air. Um, and quite honestly, sh we should have, in, in reality, already been to a dyno and said this is the power it makes and, and ready to go. So I'm a little bit irritated with myself that I waited this long. And then uh, once I cut the hole in the, in the frame rail over here, I just said, screw it. I'm going to turbo it at all costs, no matter what. And so now I'm paying for that. So I'm going to set you up on a time lapse. I'm sorry for the time lapse. Sorry for uh, not a lot of updates, but I'm just really struggling here with my time management to uh, get this deal cranking.
morning, y'all. It is Friday, the 22nd of September. I was out here this morning till 4.30. I worked yesterday, Thursday, and then I was out here till 4.30 in the morning. Got the intercooler mounted and been working on the cold side piping. There's some things that, like when my exhaust comes out the fender, maybe I should have done something different, turned the turbo around, but we're just gonna have to deal with the decisions that I made. I'm gonna show you that real quick and then I'm gonna load the little trailer up and take it over to Merle's. I just don't have time. I think my dad is going to buff it out for me. Um, but before he does that, Merle said he would go through the bearings and make sure that the bearings are good. Um, this little trailer only has like a thousand miles on it, but it is a Chinese trailer and it has been sitting the last three years. I just seen a big black widow run inside this damn thing. <clears throat> I need to kill that sucker. But uh, I'm gonna load a little trailer up, take it over to Merle's. Sorry I haven't filmed a lot. I'm on a crunch, 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 and I just don't have time to film. Uh, it is what it is. So this is a part of the video where um, I got the car pretty much buttoned up with the turbo, the fuel system and all that. I did not film any of putting the Holly EFI in. So my friend Jason came over and we pulled out all the kind of stock wiring, salt and pepper shakers, all that stuff that controls the EFI from the Fox. And we put the Holly EFI in. Um, Pretty self-explanatory plug-and-play stuff. Got that done. And then could not get the car to start. Um, we were due to leave on Thursday morning to start heading toward... We were going to leave early in the morning, like 6, 7. Well, that came and went. And uh, we didn't leave. And... Um, at about three o'clock in the afternoon, the car still hadn't started. The shop looked like a bomb went off. And I told my wife, we're done, we're not gonna go. Um, I said, I'm gonna close the shop doors. And we'll just take the Lexus and she can like enter the street class and we'll go have a good time. I didn't wanna let Tony and Tess down, but I couldn't get power to the fuel pump. I couldn't get power to the fuel injection. I spent some time on the phone with Holly and uh, their tech there pretty much told me it's whatever I did was the issue. Um, it wasn't their stuff and that the Holly needed to see, you know, three or four different signals before it would fire the fuel pumps, blah, blah, blah. Which was weird because when I went in the night before we were supposed to leave, bad from Holly. And so I had another relay that plugged in. I plugged it in, turned the key, and the fuel pump started. And I had been getting two, three hours of sleep every night. So I was tired. I went in. I came out the next morning. I had nothing from the fuel pump. Couldn't figure it out. Come to find out uh, about 3.30, Tim came over. And uh, I was ready to clean up and give up. And he's like, are you sure all the connectors are, you know, latched, this, that, or the other, you know, on? And uh, we checked all that stuff. And then I end up grabbing the relay, the fuel pump relay that's wired in the Holly. And a wire comes out. So one of the wires wasn't even crimped. Um, and it was kind of shoved in there. Well, it came out. And that was the issue. Um, as soon as we did that, we got power to the fuel pump. And powered the injectors. So what you're going to see here is a few short clips. Um, 
we kind of struggled to get the car to even start. Initially, we were trying to start on E85. But somehow, something got missed when I did the wizard to set it up. And uh, I'll talk about that in the next video. Um, the next video will be us getting there and getting going. I know I'm a little behind Tess, but um, you guys are going to like what I put this car through because I missed something in the wizard. So here's the next few videos and, uh, and we pack it up and we actually end up making it and get on the road. We went to bed about uh, 1.45 in the morning and got up at 4 and got on the road Friday um, and the race started Saturday.